Um, and uh, we seemed like it seemed like a good opportunity for us. It seems like it would be something that you guys would want to talk to your people about. I know several people who are currently in the process of, of applying for reverse mortgages, and uh, they are going through Mutual of Omaha, the ones that I do know. And so I would like to introduce you right now to David Carter. David uh, is the contact that Taylor Overly had, for those of you who know uh, Taylor. And uh, he is here locally. He lives in Holiday. And he has been the one who has been kind enough to arrange for us to meet with Shelly, whose bio I was just reading, and, really, and it really impresses me. So, David, take it away. Hi. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone, for um, including us in your training this week. Um, you know, I had a call this week from Nancy, who responded to an ad that I run in the Holiday City Journal. Uh, you know, I'm happy to know that people see my ad. She's 70 years old. Her husband's 72. He's not talking about me. And they have, a, it's not Nancy. It's <laughs> not it's Nancy. It's different. <laughs> it's got a home in Concord Heights worth, she gets it's $750,000. She said they've got $1.1 million in their IRA and a combined Social Security income of $56,000 a year. Uh, they still have a mortgage on the home and they're of $120,000 and they're paying $1,200 a month. You know, her worries were that uh, they're maybe depleting their assets too fast and running out of money. They're concerned about the tax consequences of exceeding their required distributions. And they've got concerns about selling assets in a down market. What they do have is a lot of equity in their home that could be a solution to their concerns about running out of money. Uh, and I, I bring that up, that scenario up because reverse mortgages um, have been considered a loan of last resort. And that's certainly not the case for Nancy and her husband or what we're seeing today. So I um, want to present to you some of the new thinking about how to integrate reverse mortgages into an overall plan. And that you may be working with uh, seniors who are trying to figure out how to manage their own cash flow and expenses. Um, I'll turn it over to Shelley Giardano, who is the Director of Enterprise Integration for Mutual of Omaha and has a very impressive bio. Maybe Doug could read a little bit about Shelly. <laughs> Great introduction, or David. You can launch into it. Yeah, let me go. Okay. So, um, so we're delighted to be here with you today. And, you know, that, that's a great introduction for this uh, presentation, David, because we're going to be look, kind of looking at it through the lens of women, women in retirement. And, you know, why is that? Um, why are, are women kind of worthy of a little bit of specialist attention on your part? Well, it, it may not be special attention because we know that you want to do, you know, what is suitable and right for every one of your clients. But if you're ignoring women, it may be dis uh, you may be um, disadvantaging your practice. Um, there's something like uh, seventy percent of the uh, women whose husbands uh, die or if they are divorced fire their advisors. Um, that, that's well uh, that's well documented. And here are some of the reasons that they they give. I hardly knew him. He spoke mostly to my husband. He treated me like I was an extension of my husband. I just couldn't relate to him. All he spoke about was rates of return. She really didn't listen to me and I felt patronized when I asked questions. So it's just good business to be aware of the special needs of, of women in retirement. So, um, you know, it is true. We don't need to, to beat this to death. You know, we know that women live longer than men and that means that they have to stretch less retirement savings over longer periods of time. And a lot of times there's a, there's a, you know, a decrease in, in household uh, cash flow when the, uh, the husband uh, dies. And I, we were just listening to Michael Finca on Wednesday, who pointed out that, you know, your clients who are going to be in the, the higher um, uh, income levels, you know, they, they, sadly, uh, longevity is positively correlated um, with with assets um, in retirement, but because people are um, 
living longer or living a, a, a more um, healthy lifestyle and particularly not smoking. Um, men are starting to catch up with women to a certain degree, but women and men that you are likely to be giving financial advice, there's just a, an enormous chance um, that they are going to um, live, you know, well, one of them at least will live well into their 90s. So you have to, you have to plan for that. Um, so we know that there's a retirement income gender gap when women age 65 and older have a median household retirement income um, of $47,000, only 83% of their male counterpart. And, you know, over their lifetime, women earn roughly 80 cents on the dollar throughout their careers compared to men, reducing the amount that women can save for retirement. And of course, we, you know, it's, it's, it's still not equitable out there. Women are outliving um, men, and so they are more likely to be widowed. We also know that women are caregivers throughout their lives. Um, so they're more likely to leave the workforce or take part-time jobs so that they can accommodate caregiving responsibilities. So they have lower social security <clears throat> payments and obviously lower total retirement income. And years spent out of the workforce for caring, uh, caregiving responsibilities for taking care of their children, spouses, and aging parents significantly impacts women's total retirement savings and income. You know, I was out of the workforce for a decade um, you know, to take care of my own children. And, you know, I, I feel it a little bit that I need to work a little bit longer than I may have um, to make up for that, that decade that I was gone. Um, so uh, female caregivers 50 and older have 58% less retirement wealth than non-caregivers. And um, late life divorce, if you've seen, you know, friends or, or clients who've had to go through that, it can be absolutely devastating late in life um, to, for a woman, um, well, both of them, but women in particular, uh, to, um, to undergo a divorce. So, you know, we know that women um, take care of their husbands a lot of times um, during, uh, during uh, their elder years and spend a, a, a lot of resources doing that, not the least of which sometimes is just their, their health. And so, when um, a woman is widowed or divorced, there's not a wife around, you know, who's going to provide care for her. Um, to sort of add insult to injury, um, at least for, you know, the older generation, um, women feel greater pain when they lose money than men. And so women tend to shy away from stocks more than men do. And this makes intuitive sense because stocks are more volatile and unpredictable on average than bonds or cash. So they just feel more comfortable with um, kind of lower returns, but lower risk. But that could be the wrong direction, uh, depending on how you look at, at retirement for women um, who probably do need a little slightly higher exposure to stocks um, so that their retirement assets will outpace inflation over long stretches of time versus um, cash and bonds. So, and then we've all seen what uh, inflation can do. And, you know, the you're living longer, the, there's a greater chance that any of these bad things um, can, you know, probability that any of these bad things can, can happen um, to you. So, um, but there's this other thing that's quite insidious and was very interesting to read. Um, and it's called the pink tax. So um, let's just start at the basics here. The cost of reproduction are, are borne um, by women, uh, menstruation and uh, childbearing, a lot of times birth control and um, nursing. And then, and then you know, take, just, the, just the pure expense of taking care of children. But actually, women end up paying more for products. Um, according to axthepinktax.com, which is a very entertaining website, the pink tax has cost a 30-year woman more than $40,000. A woman in her 60s will have cost up nearly $82,000 in fees that men um, don't have to pay. And currently, there's no, no federal law prohibits companies from charging these different prices for identical items based on gender and some, some really egregious examples of this are vehicle repair um, and dry cleaning. But you can actually 
Um, I, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me, these are just these are the same products. One's pink, one's blue, and um, it costs uh, thirteen dollars more to have the exact thing in pink versus there. And it's it's around the world. So these are in euros here. Uh, a uh, hey, a Shelley? pink one. Yes. Are you uh, do you have a presentation? Do you have slides that you're showing? Yes, I do. Uh huh. Okay, we're we're not seeing slides. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> yep. Okay. You see, Let me... you see, there's a little square down at the bottom of your screen that has an up arrow in it. Do you see that? Let me see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. No worries. No see. worries. Okay. Um. I. Hmm. Let me go so here. If if okay. you push that. So you have to go up and you have to select something in when you click that box with the up arrow, it brings up a dialog box. You you have to click that dialog box. You have to click on one of the options in that dialog box, sharing your entire screen, sharing a tab, sharing I a just, window. Yeah, I don't see a, an up arrow. I see me. Um so right at right at the bottom. You okay, see a, there we go. A, oh, now see I see all of you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. you weren't seeing. Okay. Um, all right. Now, if I now, what do you want me to do now? So at the bottom of the Google Meet screen mm -hmm. is a is a bunch of buttons at the bottom. Got some it. Are in, some are in red. So the one right. that has the square with the up pointing arrow, click that. Mm-hmm. And then click, it opens a dialog box, and then pick the option that's going to show the presentation that you have. Did that do it? Uh, not yet. Share. Let's see here. So you have to click something. Even if you only have one thing in that box, you have to click something. Okay. Click something. Okay. Share. There it's going. Ah. It's working. Oh, uh, so sorry. No worries. All right. Well, this is just this is kind of just sort of building up. But anyway, so so the pink tax is real. For example, if okay, you buy. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Shelley. Go ahead. Um, so I can see you is is your presentation in one of the tabs that I see on the screen. I'm seeing your browser window. Um, well, it says uh, it, it it says it's sharing my screen. It is sharing your screen. I'm just not seeing the presentation. I'm oh there it is down there. It says there we go. There, there we go. Okay, I'm seeing it now. Got okay. It. <laughs> All right. Gosh, so sorry. All right. Um, so, um, so anyway, so just to give you an example, if if women buy razors that are pink, um, and they cost fit, and the exact same razor um, for women, it's uh, it costs fifty cents more. So I don't know what it is about pink. I love pink salt. I, I have an example. One one of my children, my daughter, uh, was. Um, the first seventh grader to play JV field hockey. We were so proud, you know, we're going to go out and buy, buy the stick for her. And, you know, we went and tested them and, you know, the balance of it, the, 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 the uh, angle on and on and on and on. And we got to the end of it. Well, honey, what, which one do you want? She said, I'll take the pink one. So, I mean, it's real. Uh, we like pink and we pay for it. So, um, and, and I honestly think this $82,000 in fees is, is on the low side for what women um, pay. So you may not have thought about this, and that is that um, women really are um, uh, homeowners. Uh, they are, uh, even today, 6% uh, of the first time home buyers are women. 15% uh, of all the buyers out there are, are, are women. Uh, women own homes. So there's an asset there that is, um, that is not something you may have been thinking about um, until, until David brought it to your attention. So, uh, 
so we're just going to shift gears now and, and kind of talk about what treating the home as an asset can do for clients in retirement. And I just want to point out here that all of the research comes from um, the eggheads, as we call them. You may know Dr. Wade Fowl, Dr. Barry Sachs, Jamie um, Hopkins. They uh, are members of our Academy for Home Equity and Financial Planning at the University uh, of Illinois. So, you know, the first thing that, that, that they point Shelby, out oh, is, yeah, go ahead. I was just asking if you were advancing. And yes, you are. We see it. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So the first thing uh, everybody, it kind of comes to everybody's uh, attention when you start thinking about the house is just how much of uh, the house uh, is valued in regard to other assets. So it, it turns out that two thirds of the average American's net worth is actually tied up in his home. And, and uh, David gave a great, great example there of the other Nancy who gave him a call. So if you were going to monetize your house, you've got this big asset, you know, what are your choices? Well, you can um, change your living environment if you're, if you're not uh, in, in the position or want to take a, a job. You could Airbnb your house, and actually we hear from the Airbnb people that older women are their number one host cohort. You could do a Golden Girls, just kind of rent out your house to uh, people of a like age. You can sell and move, which sometimes works for people, and sometimes it's just the last thing that they want to do. Or probably the least popular one is just to move in with the kids, although that works with some families. Um, or um, you can monetize your home using uh, a mortgage. Now, there's a way to do that um, and have monthly payments, which we all know about, which is to refinance. Um, and you can, the goal of a refinance is to get a lower payment or cash out, or you can take out a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit. But again, then, you know, you're going to be responsible for. Um, using some of your cash flow to um, to service the debt here. So basically, you're trying to leverage your home equity, but you're in effect having to deleverage it to a certain extent by having to make those monthly payments. Or you can take out a reverse mortgage, and the reverse mortgage has no mandatory monthly payments or on the principal or the interest until the last one of them dies, moves. Or, or sells, and it's the only thing out there that that allows that. So let's just take a look at a traditional mortgage. Um, you know, in a traditional mortgage, you uh, make payments over time and slow. If you ever looked at how much of your payment in the beginning goes toward interest and how little of it goes to principal, it's pretty shocking. But over the course of 30 years, you you do build up. Um, equity. So you're making the payments and equity is slowly going up as you make those payments year after year after year. But so um, rather than have you pay the loan back, uh, like in a traditional mortgage with a reverse mortgage, it's the house that pays the loan back. So in a traditional mortgage, you might start with a 10% um, down payment or 20% down payment. And so you have a little bit of, of equity here, and then the rest of this just has to be dealt with over the course of 30 years. In a reverse mortgage, you're not going to be getting um, as much, you're not going to get a 90% uh, percent of the value of the home um, at the outset because there's got to be remaining equity there as a cushion because you're not going to be making payments on the principal of interest. So the interest will accumulate. And so since the house is going to pay the loan back and you're not, we need a cushion there um, to so that the rising loan balance can keep moving upward. But here's the great thing. When you reach, uh, if the loan balance reaches the balance of the home or even exceeds it, let's say the client is here in the, in the upside down uh, arena, even that, the house, no matter what it costs, uh, what, no matter what its market value is, is going to satisfy the 
the, the loan. So no deficiency judgment can ever be taken against the borrower or his estate if the loan balance rises beyond the value um, of the house. So the main thing that you got to keep in mind when you when you start introducing the idea of a reverse mortgage is that people tend to have a lot of baggage um, about reverse mortgages in their mind. So um, the first thing that, that you have got to confront from the get go, um, do you think that if you do a reverse mortgage, the lender is going to or the bank is going to get your house? And that's, you know, an enormous um uh, percentage of people still think that even though that has not been the case for over three decades. <laughs> so here are the major misconceptions that really, I mean, a lot of people just like to take a picture of this slide because it comes from Dr. Wade Sow and it addresses the main misconceptions that people have. So the first one is you do not give up title to the house. It's just a mortgage. The difference is that the payment is at the end and the interest will accumulate. You're not making payments on either the principal or the interest. Um, the, the second misconception is that a lot of times people think that they're leaving this big debt to their, their kids. And that's not the case. Um, the uh, home will satisfy whatever the home value is, will satisfy the reverse mortgage. Even if the reverse mortgage uh, is beyond the value of the house, and that's because there's FHA insurance, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute. Also, there were some reverse mortgages in the past that required the clients to give up some of their equity. Um, and it was called an equity share. And that does not exist anymore. Uh, misconception number three, a lot of times people think that once they've used up all the m money from their reverse mortgage, they're going to be kicked to the, kicked to the curb. And that's not the case. This is their home. They can stay in the house um, as long as they keep the taxes, just like any mortgage, they've got to keep their taxes, insurance, and HOA, and then keep the house in reasonable repair. Um, it's, their, it's their home um, for as, as long as they need it. And then, of course, the most important thing is that, that you know, there's not a surprise time when all of a sudden uh, payments have to be made. Uh, no monthly payment is ever required on the principal, on the principal or the interest until the last one of them dies, moves, or sells. So conceptually then, what is a reverse mortgage? Well, you'll appreciate this because it's both a mortgage and it's, it's an insurance product. Okay, so non-recourse means that, that the house will always satisfy whatever the loan balance becomes. So the house, just like any mortgage, is gonna provide the dollars, but with a reverse mortgage, um, the house is going to serve as the sole collateral for the loan. In a regular mortgage, you've got to prove to the bank that you can make those monthly payments. Not the case with a reverse mortgage. But um, the amount of money that you're eligible for in a reverse mortgage is, is, is based on um, actuarial principles. You know, how, how long do we expect you to live? It's just life expectancy tables there's no underwriting or anything uh health underwriting or anything like that but how long are you going to be in the house and if you don't use the money that you're eligible for from the get-go as you age you're going to have access to more and more borrowing power and that's a hard thing for people to to kind of get their their heads around but the easy way to remember it is the the house is going to pay the loan back if you are older, you're presumed to be in the house for a shorter period of time, so you're going to get more money from the outset. If you're younger, you may not get as much money at the outset, but if you're not using the money, if you leave it in the line of credit, as you age, you're going to get access to more and more of your own credit. So just kind of think as you age, you get more credit. All right. So. Um, as I've said, since the uh, last three decades, the reverse mortgage has not required that the client give up title or control of his home. And so this is achieved through uh, FHA insurance. And what the FHA insurance in a reverse mortgage does is it prevents the invasion of all other assets other than the house for repayment. So nobody can go to you to go to your client and say, oh, you know, you're $20,000 uh, under water here. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you or your kids have to come up with $20,000 to make up the difference. Absolutely not. 
the house will always satisfy the loan balance. And if there's remaining money, it belongs to either the borrower or, uh, excuse me, remaining equity, um, it belongs to the borrower or his estate. So, you know, let's just be upfront about this. Insurance costs money, right? Um, and, um, and the insurance component in the reverse mortgage, which this is the first time you've seen this, H-E-C-M, is Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. That's the official FHA um, reverse mortgage, represents about 95% of the market out there. So um, the cost of the insurance is actually rolled into the loan. So your client doesn't have to come up with any cash. Um, so insurance is going to cost money. And the heck of insurance, home equity conversion mortgage uh, insurance, because it's rolled into the loan, doesn't cost money up front. It costs, it costs equity. So here are the pros and cons of uh, the reverse mortgage. So um, the equity, which I just mentioned, costs must include FHA insurance to make sure that the, uh, your client has access to his home um, until the last one of them dies, moves, or sells. Now, and, and another aspect of a reverse mortgage is that the interest is not paid, if it's not paid on a, every month, um, will compound. So those are the two, uh, the two aspects of the reverse mortgage that um, are, are um, less beneficial than the pros, let's put it that. Okay, so let's balance that equity cost, including the FHA insurance, what that does over here in the, in the pros um, column. It makes the, the loan absolutely non-recourse. Uh, no deficiency judgment may be taken against the borrower or his estate to pay that to pay it back. Um, another pro here is that the the um, home equity conversion mortgage reverse mortgage is incredibly fle flexible. Um, if you want to pay uh, pay some of it back, you know, if if your ship comes in at the end of the year. You can reduce your loan balance if you want to, and there's no penalty to that. Uh, say you win the lotto and, and you want to pay it off, no uh, prepayment penalties. You can also choose to pay the interest um, on it to keep the loan balance from um, compounding due to the, due to the interest. And um, Dr. Wade Fowl actually recommends this, except that uh, if you make those payments on the reverse mortgage when your portfolio is under stress, that that is a no-no. You want to you know always be protecting your your cash flow. Of course, you can do it if you want to, but the rec recommendation is you know if you've got some money lying around and you want to you want to pay on the reverse mortgage, then then do so. But you know don't don't uh, take a loss in your portfolio in order to do so. Now hey, here's another yes. Gabrielle has a question. Gabrielle, can you just state your question? Hi, thank you. I'm in Colorado. I'm not sure where you guys are out of, but we had a case recently um, where we had a huge fire and a thousand houses got destroyed. And an elderly gentleman that had a reverse mortgage because he couldn't live in his house for the year because it was burnt to the ground as the others were, they were going to kick him out. And when some organization had to get involved to reverse that. Is there some kind yeah. of? Yeah, there's, uh, I, 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 if I were to speak to that, it would be incomplete, but there was a, a, a ruling on that just recently. So I will send it to Nancy and she can get it all to you. Great, thank you. Great. Okay, yeah, thank you. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that. That's one of those things I've been wanting to, to um, delve into so that I could speak to it. So, um, so thank you. All right, now, a reverse mortgage uh, cannot be canceled, frozen, or reduced, and this, this refers as well to the line of credit. So if you've set up your reverse mortgage, and some of it is in the form of a line of credit, unlike a HELOC, traditional loan, the, the lenders are absolutely forbidden um, to come in and cancel, freeze, or reduce it. And this is important for people, um, particularly back in like 2009 or so, when um, you know we had had the recession and people were going into their portfolios um, to to get the cash that they needed, and um, and you know it's just devastating to the portfolio to have to sell at at a loss. And so, um, unfortunately, their HELOCs were not there to help them because at that time things were so topsy turvy. The banks were like, 
well, you know, we need liquidity too. So we're going to go ahead and cancel cancel you um, and home values have dropped. We're going to cancel you. You know, so, I mean, it, it was in the contract. It wasn't illegal, but it would be illegal for a lender to cancel, freeze, or reduce a home equity conversion mortgage, reverse mortgage. Um, so there's no foreclosure possible for missing payments. And uh, again, the credit capacity grows uh, grows with age. So just keep that in mind. All right. So again, um, you know, a, a, a HECM reverse mortgage basically is a revolving credit line if you've not used all of the money that you are eligible for. So let's say, um, just to compare and contrast here, let's say uh, you had a credit card with a $10,000 limit and you spent $9,000 within the month. So temporarily, your credit limit goes down to $1,000. Um, but within the month, you pay back the $9,000 and you're, you get a revolve back up to a $10,000 credit limit. Month two, you spend $8,000, your credit limit drops to $2,000. Um, and then month three, uh, but, but within the month, you pay your $8,000 back and you're back to $10,000. So at the end of the year, you've got a $10,000 credit limit. Well, the way that the heck of line of credit grows, remember, as you age, you get more access to your own credit. Is there is a formula that's established at the closing based on, on current interest rates. And so at the, let's say you have $100,000 uh, in, your, um, in your line of credit from setting up a reverse mortgage on your house. At the end of the year, uh, in this example, uh, it would be more now because interest rates are so much higher. Your um, access to credit now, your credit line would be $104,000. And in the second year, $108,000. And it just happens automatically as you age. So here's an example of a line of credit on a $400,000 home value. So this person set up the reverse mortgage very young at age 62 and um, had a um, line of credit value of 106,800. And you can see the growth and it's growing and compounding as well. So by age 82, 20 years later, let's say um, there, there's a big um, long-term care event or you know some, something happens uh, that there's now $483,000 in that line of credit, um, just, you know, a, a basically a phone call away and just think of the um of the uh, peace of mind that 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 brings you know to have have that line of credit just there you don't have to use it it's not costing you much to have it in place but to know that if something were to happen you have easy access to your home equity so that's the the, the heckam line of credit and as you can see here um the difference between a HELOC, the traditional HELOC, is you set it up and it, it doesn't go up in borrowing capacity and usually you have to redo it within 10 years. But the HECM line of credit um, continues to grow. And this actually was at a pretty low interest rate. So Dr. Wade Fowl uh, from the American College uh, recommends that it makes more sense to set up a reverse mortgage early in life and get that line of credit uh, compounding to be there when you need it. All right, so the questions your clients are going to ask you, you know, uh, are reverse mortgages safe? Well, as the FHA commissioner, um, former FHA commissioner used to tell his mom, the reverse mortgage is the law of the land. <laughs> um, it was the, the HECM home equity conversion mortgage was signed into uh, a, a, a bill that signed the bill uh, in 1988 and made it law. Um, so uh, the home equity conversion mortgage is FHA insured by the full faith and, and um, credit of the U.S. government for homeowners who are 62 and plus, 62 plus. The bank does not take the house. You cannot owe more than the sale price. It's in effect until one dies, moves, or sells. That's another question people have. If, if my husband goes to um, a uh, nursing home uh, do I have to move? And the answer is no. If one of one of them is in the home, uh, it only one. It only need you only need one of them um, for the loan to stay in effect. Again, there's no monthly mortgage payment required ever, and the proceeds you may not have thought about this um, are tax free. 
So the, the money that, that comes to uh, you via a reverse mortgage is considered proceeds from a loan by the IRS and it's tax free. Uh, another safeguard for you uh, and your client is that every client uh, must attend an FHA counseling session. And David can get this book to you, uh, the National Council of Aging and HUD uh, put together this book lit on um, on how the reverse mortgage works and basically the the goal of this is to make sure that everybody understands that even though payments aren't required interest is involved or nobody's trying to hoodwink anybody here interest is, is going to accrue um, and that you are responsible for your taxes uh, insurance and homeowners and and, and homeowners uh, homeowner fee HOA fees if there are any. Excuse me. All right. So how are the proceeds distributed? Um, lump sum is one, and that's for generally how people who want to pay off their their current mortgage and do away with a mortgage that has principal and interest payments um, will need to take, if not the whole lump sum, a, a substantial portion of it from their reverse mortgage. Uh, Monthly tenure payment uh, is, you know, like your accounting professor, you, you, you annuitize basically the equity that you are eligible for, and you will receive a monthly payment um, for as long as one of you is in the house. You can set it up as a term payment. And an example of this is the, the ones that I've seen um, have been, let's say, uh, the husband needs, um, needs substantial care and they want to do it in the home. Um, so you can set up a term, say they need $12,000 a month. So you can set up a term payment, you know, $12,000 a month for, for as long as, as, as it'll last. Uh, you can take, as I've mentioned, the reverse mortgage is the line of credit that the lender is forbidden to cancel, reduce, or freeze. Or you can take a combination. So you could, you know, take $50,000 to pay off credit cards, pay off your car, you know, sort of, um, uh, reduce those inflexible expenses and then leave the rest in the line of credit or any combination um, it works and you're not stuck in one either you can if you take take it in one way and you want to change it you can you can do that um, so uh, you know this this idea of long-term care is is very difficult uh, there are not that many people who have taken up long-term care policies um, sometimes they either can't afford it, um, they can't qualify for it, or they just are not interested in it. So you can set up a reverse mortgage line of credit to to meet those needs, for example. Um, and and you know surveys say that if you address the long term care, if you have some kind of plan with your client, it doesn't have to be a long term care policy, but you've discussed it and there's a plan out there. Um, your clients are much more satisfied. Uh, so in general, um, the, the thinking is that if you're gonna be in the house, if you expect to be in the house for five years or so, um, then the cost of setting up the reverse mortgage, which are, which are not uh, taken out of pocket, but are, are part of the loan balance, um, are, are more than justified for setting up a reverse mortgage to meet these unexpected, um, unexpected needs. So I thought you'd like to see um, this Heckam line of credit here one more time at different interest rates. So remember, the HELOC is not going to grow automatically in borrowing capacity. You'd have to go to the bank and redo things in order to do that. But the Heckam line of credit is going to grow. So at a lower interest rate, you see the, the line of credit growing here at 6%, kind of mid-range, a little bit less than what we've got now. But if you get into the 8%, uh, you know, that line of credit is really going to grow, and it is it is possible for the line of credit to actually outgrow the value of the home, and the client still has access to it. I I know of a case um, where um, the uh, it was someone actually worked with us. Mother had a modest condominium in Connecticut, and during the the um, recession of 2009-10, um, her her condo value dropped tremendously below what she had um, originally it had originally praised for when she got a reverse mortgage but she she had a line of credit 
And so she was able to, to go in and take money out of her line of credit so that the whole um, balance was actually greater than, than the balance, the, um, the, the home appraisal. So it is possible um, and, um, you know, just underscores the fact that a line of credit cannot be canceled, frozen, or reduced uh, when the, once the client sets it up. So uh, I, I love reading this testimonial because uh, it came in March, totally unsolicited, uh, March 2020. And if you remember that month, I think it was the 15th, we all went, we all went home and, and, and didn't come back. Um, and, you know, we, nobody knew what was going to happen um, to the world, right? And so we got this, uh, one of our, our loan officers got this testimonial. You may not remember me, but we did a heck of line of credit seven years ago. In these unprecedented times of health and financial uncertainty, March 2020, my line of credit, my reverse mortgage line of credit, now grown to $540,000. Now, this is California. You know, they got big numbers out there. But he now has $540,000 in his line of credit. Um, which is costing him very little to maintain. Um, but what it d d uh, does is provides me the comfort I might uh, not otherwise experience. So I hope that he didn't have to um, spend $540,000 because of the pandemic, but at that point, nobody knew what was going to happen, right? Okay, so we're going to go through a couple little case studies here. Uh, so this is an example of Stephanie, going back to our focus on women. And um, so the uh, mortgage payment is thirteen thousand uh, dollars yearly, or or uh, eleven hundred thirty four dollars per month. And so we're going to replace her current mortgage with the HECM home equity conversion mortgage uh, Ruth, reverse Shelley's mortgage. Shelly's breaking up. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure what to do about it. Yeah, I'm. I, I was hoping if we just pause for a second. Okay. Uh, are we supposed to be looking at some numbers right now? Yes. I'm seeing the spontaneous testimony, testimonial. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go back and then I just think it's this latency I, thing with the internet. Okay. I, that, I'm, seeing, that uh, I'm seeing, uh, she's not breaking up for me and I'm seeing Stephanie. So. Oh, okay. All right. You should be seeing some, some case study. Are you seeing that? Yes. Oh, yes. good. Okay. Stephanie. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so she is going to to pay off her current mortgage, and she's also going to have eighty thousand dollars in her growing, non cancelable heck of line of credit. So, if you were, I don't know if you all use this, but if you if you um, if you do a uh, a Monte Carlo um, treatment of of her current scenario where she's got this monthly payment she has to deal with versus having not to come out of her own cash flow to pay that principal and interest because she's replaced it with a reverse mortgage versus uh, the third one, which is actually um, paying off her mortgage with the reverse mortgage and then annuitizing what she has left. Um, which she could have either left in the line of credit or she could make take it as a payment. She got an extra 463 a month. So I um, hope you see that. So basically, with in her situation with her current um, her current uh, requirements to pay that principal and interest payment, she had virtually a, a zero percent probability of success that she was going to have enough money to make it 30 years. Uh, without making changes. Um, if she gets rid of the principal and interest payment, it puts her at 68%. If she gets rid of the mortgage payment and takes uh, $463 a month, I, it, it, it looks like, I can't totally see, it looks like 99% probability that her she's going to have enough money um, to, last, um, to last 30 years. All right, we talked a little bit about boomer divorce. Uh, so here are Carlos and Maria before their, their divorce. They're both 66. They need $6,000 uh, um, um, uh, a month. Their nest egg is $750,000. Um, so, uh, but then they get divorced. So before the divorce, uh, they had 
a home value of five hundred thousand dollars, home free and clear, um, and as I said, the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and six thousand dollars cash flow needs. After the divorce, she has three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. She has the home, five hundred thousand dollar home that's not doing anything for her, and because she has the home, even though her cash flow needs are not six thousand dollars a month, they are still substantial at at forty five hundred dollars a month. So in this situation, Maria is going to take out a reverse mortgage on her five hundred thousand dollar house and just add a very modest amount of uh, distribution from her reverse mortgage at just twelve hundred dollars a month. So um, she's using her home equity in a very um, uh, sustainable, conservative way, but it has a massive effect uh, on her her retirement security. So without the twelve hundred dollars a month reducing, you know, the forty five hundred dollars a month that she has to pay out, um, she's going to run out of money here. And if she does take the $1,200 a month of, of, of tax-free distributions from her reverse mortgage, she's in a much better situation. So um, here's another thing that not too many people know very much about, and that you can actually buy a new house using a reverse mortgage. So people think, oh, you know, if I take out a reverse mortgage, it, it can only be on the house I've been living in. I don't really want to live in that house. I really want to live in the active 55 community, you know, down the way, but it's too expensive. Well, here's the solution for that. So, but the first thing that you have to recognize is that we're going to be putting the reverse mortgage, not on the legacy home or the departure home, but on the new home. So this is different than what people think about. So the, the reverse mortgage is going to be based on the value of the home that the uh, client is moving into. So, um, so I, here's a, a, another divorce scenario, but it takes into account this being able to buy a house using a reverse mortgage. So here's a horrible situation. This is a true study. Uh, Ron and Judy were live in their 70s, and they were living in the same home in New York, but not as a married couple. Just, you know, oof. so um, they were stuck till they found out about the Heckam for purchase or reverse mortgage for purchase. So they sold their house in New York and they netted $330,000. They then proceeded to divide their personal property into two separate moving pods. They both moved to South Carolina and drove independently. So then Ron moved into a short-term rental and Judy lived while her, with her sister while house hunting. So this is what Judy did. So she had $165,000 share from the $330,000 uh, that they netted from their sale of their house in New York. So she used that $122,000, $740 as a down payment on her Heckam for purchase. Remember, we have to have significant equity, about 50% to work with in a reverse mortgage because there's going to be an accumulation of the interest over time. So um, she was able with $122,000 to buy a $305,000 house for herself in South Carolina. So she was able to retain $42,000 from the sale of her house. Um, The rest of the money um, for the purchase of the house came from a reverse mortgage, and she has no monthly principal or interest payment ever. And she used $20,000 of her remaining home sale to furnish her new retirement home to her liking, and she was able to bank the remaining twenty-two thousand, you know, for 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 future needs um, in um, in retirement. One of the bad things about doing this by phone is that people keep calling me, so uh, I don't know if you're hearing the clicks. But anyway, uh, so um, so the husband, I'll just throw in what happened to him. He didn't use as much for his Heckam for purchase. He bought a condo in Myrtle Beach, but he needed a big chunk of money to buy a big golf um, membership so he could golf down there. So fantastic solution, um, just knowing that something like a Heckam for Purchase exists. So here's just a a kind of a schematic about how that is, so how this works. So here's the house, the departure home. So, you know, anecdotally, we know usually that mom wants to stay in the home and the kids want her to stay in the home, but, you know, there's just so many resources to go around. so a way to make this happen is 
that if mom um, takes out a reverse mortgage, that frees up what is now cash and she can pay her half of the value of the house in this example to her husband who then takes that cash and leverages with a heck of for purchase and buys you know something he really wants so you know half of the value of this house he would be in a bad bad part of town let's say but by a by being able to leverage that down payment with a heck of for purchase he was able to buy a, a nice house or um, they can sell the house and each of them take um, half, half, if that's what they agree on, and then they can each use a heckin for purchase and buy a really nice house um, for each. So it, 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 it um, provides, um, you know, an equitable solution to housing and kind of moves the transaction along. So just to reiterate, the heckin for purchase requires a one-time down payment in cash Today's interest rates, you can count on about 60% of the value of the house. So if it's a $100,000 house, they need $60,000 to put down, you know, usually which comes from the sale of the departure home, but doesn't have to be. Um, the remaining purchase price is financed with this reverse mortgage. And that means that there are no monthly mortgage payments on principle of the interest. There's just a lien on the house in the form of a reverse mortgage. And so here's another example of uh, what using a Heckin for purchase can do. This was a tr an example um, an advisor in Sacramento sent this. So the um, gen gentleman's wife had died, and um, you know he he understood the challenges of not having cash. Um, she had a long illness, so he wanted to move to San Francisco to be near um, the kids. So here's his $500,000 house, which he netted 460 from, and but he needed $700,000. So he was going to have to withdraw from his assets $240,000 so that he could live in this $700,000 house and not have the obligation of monthly payments. But with the Heckam for purchase financing, uh, same thing, $500,000, he netted 460, the new home price was 700. He was able to receive um, financing of $330,000 um, from his uh, reverse mortgage. So he needed $369,100 as a down payment. But remember, he had four sixty dollars coming from the sale of his house. So between the two forty dollars that he didn't have to spend and the, um, the, the $91,000 redig residual from um, not having... Uh, to put down that 460, all of the 460, he was to the better $331,000. So a much better outcome for him. And again, if, if you run it in financial planning software, uh, Money Guide Pro in this example, uh, you know, his, his uh, probability of success if he had used all $700,000 um, in cash, including the 240 from his assets, he would have had zero uh, probability of success. Um, and if he may decided to take out a regular mortgage and had a monthly payment, it would look like this, a little bit better, but much, much, much better um, situation if he used the HECM uh, for purchase to finance uh, 40, roughly 40% 40 of the value of the home. <laughs> so another way uh, to use a reverse mortgage is to uh, work to maximize Social Security. Most people, most people who are in the position to be getting financial advice, um, expect to maximize their social security by waiting until age 70. So here's the um, case of Elizabeth. She's divorced at 62. She needs $87,000. <coughs> Excuse me. She does get 5,000 a month in a pension. She has a $500,000 IRA and she is, is in a pretty high tax bracket. She lives in California. Uh, but she's going to realize a $240,000 reverse mortgage line of credit. So in this situation, she uses, she wants to defer, she understands that she needs to defer her Social Security until age 70. So she uses her reverse mortgage line of credit for her expenses from age 62, the, you know, the deficit that she has from age 62 to 68. And then she does have to start drawing on her IRA. Um, uh, to meet her 
her expenses. But then at age 70, you can see then that her maximum social security kicks in. And so her, it, it just has this fantastically positive effect on, on um, her overall, um, overall wealth. So why did this work so well? Well, let's face it, reverse mortgage funded six plus years of spending. So that's six years that the portfolio didn't have to do it. We're adding an asset, $240,000 um, uh, HECM line of credit. Taxes matter. A client in a 33% plus tax bracket um, is, is going to have much less um, spending power. Uh, so a dollar of a reverse mortgage tax-free has a spending power of an, uh, an IRA, taxable IRA of a dollar, of a dollar fifty, or two hundred forty thousand dollars from the reverse mortgage is the tax equivalent of three hundred and sixty from the IRA. Um, so her investment portfolio was untouched until age sixty-eight. She got six extra years of growth before withdrawal, six fewer years of withdrawal. And when you run uh, the, the software that the financial advisors want to, you know, try to predict the probability of success, um, it reduced the sequence risk. So what that means is if you start your retirement, if you draw a card and you, and you start your retirement when your portfolio is, is, is under stress, that is just absolutely um, catastrophic and sometimes to the portfolio, you're 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 having to spend more units, more stocks, let's call it, um, to get the money you need, and then they're not there to, to participate in the recovery. It's very detrimental. And then, of course, the, the whole point of this is to um, is to uh, be able to protect the investment portfolio, because by age seventy, she's getting the highest possible uh, social security payment. Um, uh, available to her. All right, so let's talk about protecting the portfolio, and we'll be finishing up here. So um, this is an example by Dr. Barry Sachs. So um, it's going to be comparing, there are a lot of numbers here, but it's a $500,000 portfolio. And the first, uh, in the first nine years, there are negative returns. This is called early sequence of returns risk. So um, they, uh, <clears throat> the client uh, in this strategy, if so, begins the first year taking his his distribution. Um, but if during the year the portfolio is negative, he doesn't take from the portfolio anymore. He instead he set up this reverse mortgage line of credit, and he takes his draws from the reverse mortgage. Now you can see that the the draws are going up because of inflation. What you need every every year is is higher because there's inflation. Um, so so the strategy that we're going to look at again is if there's a negative year, don't draw from your portfolio. Draw from your reverse mortgage line of credit. But if you get a positive year, um, like here, just go ahead and 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 draw from here and here. Draw from your portfolio. Very very simple. So what is the effect on that? A lot of numbers here, I'm sorry. But in this case, um, the client, same client, $500,000, just went ahead and, and took his inflation-adjusted draws from the portfolio without regard um, to returns, because that's all he had. So he gets down here, and he's, out of, he's completely out of money in the portfolio. And then he's on a hope and a prayer, going to set up a reverse mortgage um, and start taking draws, and they're substantial draws by this time, from the reverse mortgage. So he ends up with zero in his portfolio and, and a balance on his reverse mortgage of 538000 Now compare that, whoops, sorry, compare that to the same person, but in this case, he has a strategy of using draws from the reverse mortgage line of credit that he set up early so that it's there following years where there's a negative return. So um, so here we are, uh, uh, minus 9.3, he's gonna go to the reverse mortgage line of credit. Minus 15 goes to the reverse mortgage line of credit. Positive 22 draws from the portfolio. Well, at the end of 30 years, he has more in his portfolio than he started out with, a million here. And yes, he has debt against the house, 
uh, of 692 in this example. Now he could have been making, when things were flush, if he wanted to make payments on the reverse mortgage on interest only or, or you know, pay it down, he could have done that um, if that's important to him. But the point here is just to demonstrate that um, by protecting the portfolio with this other asset, with a reverse mortgage, the, the remember, there's zero in the portfolio um, in this exam, on the example where he's not using the reverse mortgage. And then there's a million dollars in the portfolio um, with uh, with reverse mortgage. So he goes on this side, he's minus 538 off pure debt on the house. And in this example, he's still got a million dollars in the portfolio. And if you subtract the million dollars in the portfolio, um, if, if you subtract what's owed on the house, uh, minus uh, from the million dollars that's in the portfolio, it's um, he's still three hundred ninety-four thousand dollars to the good in comparison. So the swing there is nine hundred and thirty-three thousand seven hundred and and sixty-four. So just ask you this: Who doesn't need a shock absorber in retirement? If you think of the Heckam as a giant shock absorber, hearing aid six thousand dollars, dental. We've literally had clients leave the closing table. Um, at a reverse mortgage uh, origination and walk over to the dentist spend twenty thirty thousand dollars. We had a financial advisor recently fifty thousand dollars dental fee not covered car repairs can people you know who are living tight to the vest here car repairs are devastating housing value shock health shock number one reason liquidity shock you know you've got stuff but you can't get to the money with a reverse mortgage line of credit you sure can inflation shock divorce shock portfolio shock. So, so setting up, you don't have to use the money, but setting up that reverse mortgage line of credit that's going to grow in value as you age is just liquidity there um, to meet all these unexpected needs. And I'm going to give you a gift here, um, reverse mortgage calculator, Dr. Wade Fow. So if you're sitting in front of your client and you'd like to have some understanding of uh, how much money would be available to them, you can go to the retirement researcher. Here's the link down here. Um, and it will give you an up-to-date um, calculation of um, how much your client uh, would be eligible for, either as a starting line of credit, a lump sum, or in monthly, in monthly payments. So, um, so there you go. And uh, Dave has this fantastic video that you can use to share with your clients that in a very uh, informative but simple way describes what sequence of returns risk does to the portfolio and how a reverse mortgage can um, can mitigate that. He's he's got that and can send that to you. So there we are. All right, David, well, thank you, you still Charlie. there? Yeah, David, do you have Thanks. anything to say? Um, well, thank you to Shelley and. Um, uh, I made a note to myself that uh, Gabe, Gabrielle, if we could chat about that, I'd be happy to uh, dive into her question. Um, and also, if you have a client scenario, um, easy for me to prepare uh, an analysis as well, uh, like the retirement researcher. And all I really need is a, an age of a borrower, an estimated home value, and uh, mortgage debt on the home if there is any mortgage debt and can easily run a um, confidential scenario. And here is contact information for me. Thank you so much. I don't know if Shelly's still on, if there are yeah, any still questions. On. Yeah, okay. are there any questions or, you know, I, I'd, I'd just be curious to know if the group, if, if any of this was surprising to them, for example, did you think, um, as most people do, that the bank automatically gets the house? Or had you recognized that that's not the case any longer? I did think that. Ah, yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> it's our number one concern out there. <laughs> okay, well, everybody, we're going to uh, sign off. We're going to record this and put this out. Uh, so that you can go back and watch it. I know I'm going to have to go back and watch it several times. This whole notion of having a line of credit exceed the worth of the asset sort of boggles my mind. So I'm going to have to think about that and try to understand that. Um, 
so thank you very much please let us know what uh what you are thinking and we'll see you next time